Anchor, the artificial intelligence presenter, let's call him Art, is designed to deliver news 24 hours a day. It's modeled after a real-life Chinese anchor. It tried to simulate human voice, facial expressions, and gestures, just like Frankie. The developer <laughs> believes the technology will reduce costs, improve efficiency, especially for websites and social media. That is... Terrifying. Scarily <laughs> realistic. It is realistic. But doesn't smile. <laughs> Mark's gone. Mark's fired. That's our time for now. Thanks for watching, I guess. Hopefully we'll be back here tomorrow. <laughs> News 3 at 5 starts right now. Right now at 5, what the Baraboo mayor is saying about this photo showing some Baraboo high school students doing a Nazi salute. The FBI is releasing its hate crimes report for 2017. We'll tell you how Wisconsin is doing. NY union leaders are calling for the resignation of the chief and the assistant chief of the Verona Fire Department. This is News 3 at 5. Thanks for staying with News 3. The small city of Baraboo caught international attention yesterday high school prom picture. The photo appears to show most of the boys in the class of 2019 doing a Nazi salute. Amanda Quintana is in downtown Baraboo with what the city thinks can be done to change a reputation that has turned negative overnight. Amanda? Yes, well, it's fair to say that many of the people across the world did not know about this small city of 12,000 until yesterday when they saw that photo. Now the city of Baraboo is that being linked to that photo, which many are saying is hateful. That photo of about 50 Baraboo High School males on the front steps of the courthouse just before junior prom, many appearing to make a Nazi salute. It was tweeted out and quickly caught the attention of thousands. So what does the city do now? Mayor Mike Palm says a grassroots movement has organized a community forum for Thursday at the Civic Center at 630 to come up with ways to educate and show that this picture is not bearable. I don't think that it's top down. I think it's bottom up. And I will be open and receptive to people's ideas as to how we can better educate ourselves and be more tolerant of our neighbors. He says whatever the intent of the photo, it is out there bringing negative attention to Baraboo. But the best thing to do is rebuild to show that that picture is not reflective of the community as a whole. Now, many of the sp people that I spoke to here in downtown Baraboo say they still don't feel like they have the facts about what happened with that photo. The photographer has come out and said that he told those boys to wave and that the picture just caught them at that bad moment. A lot of people here still thinking that might be the case and wanting to know from those boys what actually happened. And we'll hear from some of those at 6 o'clock. Amanda Quintana live in Baraboo. Amanda, thanks. Well, we're taking a closer look tonight at the newest hate crime numbers from the FBI across the country and here in Wisconsin. While the controversial photo in Baraboo is not necessarily being called a hate crime, it is cause for alarm among local religious leaders. Our Rose Schmidt is here to break down the latest statistics for you. Rose? Well, those latest numbers are from 2017, a year that had more hate crimes than the year before. For those incidents motivated by religion, more than 58% were anti-Jewish. In our state, religious hate crimes more than doubled from the year before, something local religious leaders say is not surprising to them. I was surprised to see it so close to home. Close to home because of what those gestures mean. These actions and these expressions, which might seem funny or might seem really trivial to them, really were a part of a system that, that destroyed families. Families like that of Rabbi Andrea Steinberger, who wants to give Baraboo students some perspective. Almost our entire family um, was killed in the Holocaust. And I'd like to tell them about what it's like to grow up in a very small family with almost no living relatives. Now, 73 years after that time period ended, anti-Semitism is on the rise. New numbers out from the FBI show religious bias was the largest motivating factor for hate crimes in Wisconsin, with religious hate crimes doubling between 2016 and 2017. Expressions of hate um, are 
a warning sign and um, should be addressed. They often do lead to actions of hate later on in life. Rabbi Steinberger works at Hillel on the UW-Madison campus, where she sees hateful events happen every few months. Incidents mostly of people drawing swastikas um, in community boards. In one of the most staggering stats from the FBI, there were only 46 hate crimes reported in Wisconsin for the entire year, which to her seems low. There are probably nearly that many reported throughout a year at the university. That's problematic, but she's challenging Wisconsin schools to use this as an opportunity to better educate students about the Holocaust. It's entirely possible that students didn't know what they were doing, and, and I'd say let's Let's take um, this opportunity to say that's, that is not something we want to be proud of in Wisconsin. Religious groups, both Jewish and not, say they are particularly concerned about hate crimes within schools because a quarter of all the recorded anti-Jewish incidents in Wisconsin happened among students or on a campus, similar to the event in Baraboo. All right, Rose Schmidt reporting. Rose, thank you. Thanks, Rose. We turn now to weather. Let's get a look at your first alert forecast. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield joining us in the Weather Center. Dave. Eric, we've had plenty of sunshine on this Tuesday, but temperatures have really stayed well below average for the majority of this Tuesday. Doppler track showing no snow or anything to worry about across southern Wisconsin. That lake effect snow machine in full swing across much of the state of Michigan. Look at that pretty sunset shot in Madison, the WISC TV sky cam. As I mentioned, temperatures have remained very cold outside. 23 in Madison, 27 in Janesville. That's one of the warmer spots. We're into the teens already in Viroqua, Camp Douglas, and Black River Falls. Wind speeds, they're out of the north and west at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, so that wind is dying down a little bit. Even so, it feels like the teens and even the single digits across portions of southern Wisconsin this evening. Temperatures and winds over the next 12 hours will see those lows dip into the mid-teens. By the time we start off our Wednesday, wind speeds shouldn't be too bad, and we are in for some slightly warmer temperatures over the next couple of days. We'll talk about that and our possible next chance for some snow in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Dave, thank you. Union leaders are calling for the resignation of Verona's fire chief and assistant fire chief. This comes after an investigation revealed what firefighters are calling mismanagement and harassment in several incidents. Instances. After receiving several reports of concern dating back to 2015, the city launched a third party investigation into the allegations. Our Jamie Perez spoke with the Firefighters Union this afternoon, and she joins us now with more details on the allegations that were made. Jamie? So, this report's about four pages long, basically detailing the culture of the Verona Fire Department under current Chief Joseph Giver. The city of Verona hired the Riesling Group to conduct an investigation into those allegations. They found the department is plagued with intimidation, fear, and a toxic and hostile work environment. The report quotes complaints like inadequate discipline in certain instances and a lack of leadership. The investigation involved interviews with more than 25 fire department staff who remained anonymous for fear of retaliation. The report speaks for itself. It's a sad day, really, to look in the history of the Verona Fire Department that this is what it's come to, but this is also a real opportunity to make change. And a positive change because the Vermont Fire Department can be a great place to work and a great place to serve the public. Now, according to union leaders, this report was not easy to get. They say the city approved to move forward with the investigation but did not release the report to the union until union leaders asked the mayor for it. But the mayor said that since the investigation was initiated by the city administrator in consultation with the city attorney, the council hadn't even been brought in. They ultimately released the information for public knowledge to provide some sort of transparency. The mayor said in a statement that it's important they know the city is taking the steps to ensure the fire department is well run. So so what happens next for the fire department? I'll have that answer coming up for you tonight at 6. We will see you then. Thanks, Jamie. A Monona woman has been sentenced after being charged with neglecting a child. Court records show 21-year-old Mercedes Bloodsaw pleaded no contest and was found guilty on one count of child neglect resulting in death. According to a criminal complaint, in September 2017, officers were called to the Delton Motel in Lake Delton for a report of a pulseless, non-breathing 10-month-old baby. Bloodsaw said her 10-month-old daughter and her 2-year-old son were in a bathtub playing while she was cooking. She left them alone for five minutes. When she returned, her daughter was drowning. The 10-month-old was taken to the hospital. Doctors did a brain scan on her, which revealed a severe brain injury and swelling of the brain. 
The baby died a week later. She was sentenced to four years of probation. A pedestrian walking down Highway 151 in Dodge County this morning suffered serious injuries in a crash. Dodge County Sheriff's deputies say it happened around 540 on Highway 151 north of Jackson Road. Investigators say a man was driving a car north on the right traffic lane when two pedestrians were walking in the same lane. The right side of the car hit the female pedestrian. She was thrown and taken to a hospital with serious injuries. The driver and the other pedestrian were not injured. The driver stopped at the scene and is cooperating with law enforcement. A woman suffered serious life-threatening injuries this morning in a rear-end crash with a piece of farm equipment. Dane County Sheriff's deputies and other emergency crews responded. This was about 415 on Highway 151 south of County Road V in the town of Bristol. A crash involving a minivan and a tractor that was pulling a plow. The woman driving that minivan suffered serious life-threatening injuries, was med flighted to UW hospital. The driver of the tractor was not injured. Officials say the tractor did have the required lighting and slow moving placards on it. A trumpet was stolen on Veterans Day from inside the truck of a Wisconsin man in the Army Reserve. According to a Facebook post from Chelsea Miller, her husband Matt woke up yesterday and found his truck had been broken into and his trumpet, among many other things, had been stolen. Chelsea said her husband was staying overnight in Milwaukee because he was doing a drill with his unit. She said the trumpet, which was a gift from his parents, has been with him through a tour of duty in Iraq. She said Matt is a bugler with the U.S. Army and has played at countless military funerals, including her grandfather's. The legislature's finance committee has approved Governor-elect Tony Evers' transition budget. Evers asked the state for $94,600 to cover salaries for seven positions, some equipment, supplies, travel, and legal services. State law requires the Joint Finance Committee to convene within a week of the election to approve a transition budget for any incoming governor. The money comes out of the governor's office appropriation. The finance Finance Committee approved $82,000 for Governor Walker in 2010, $87,500 for Governor Doyle back in 2002. The panel unanimously approved the request this afternoon. The session lasted less than one minute. Performance is up in Wisconsin schools and districts based on the latest school report cards. The State Department of Public Instruction released the latest report cards today. They measure the performance of more than 2,100 public schools, nearly 300 private choice schools, and 422 schools school districts. In total, nearly 84% of schools met or exceeded expectations this year. That's up from about 82% each of the previous two years. Nearly all school districts, 96%, met or exceeded expectations this year. To see how your child's individual school did, we have a link on our website, channel3000.com. Officials from the American Red Cross say it is facing a severe blood shortage and urgent, urgently needs donors. The Red Cross needs donors to avoid delays in medical care for patients. Volunteer blood drive hosts are also needed to prevent the shortage from worsening over the winter. The shortage is partially due to fewer blood drives during September and October and with hurricanes. Michael and Florence, thousands of blood and platelet donations went uncollected. The Red Cross needs an additional 4,300 blood drives across the nation, 75 in our area in December, January and February. Donations often decline during the winter holidays. Those who donate blood or platelets November 21st through the 24th will receive a long-sleeved Red Cross t-shirt. More to come on News 3 at 5. Up next, the death toll continues to rise as the wildfires burn across California. And CNN has announced it is suing the Trump administration. We'll tell you why. And on Wall Street, the Dow falls more than 100 points today. The Nasdaq edged up a hundredth of a point. S&P 500 lost four. We'll be right back.
The deadliest wildfire California has ever experienced is still threatening more than 15,000 homes, businesses, and other buildings north of Sacramento. The so-called Camp Fire is now blamed for at least 42 deaths. In Southern California, the Woolsey Fire is now 30% contained, but firefighters say the threat is far from over. Coroner search teams are picking through the burnt out rubble in Northern California looking for victims. With more than 200 people still missing, the death toll is expected to rise. The danger is far from over. If you're being held back, it's because your life and the lives of your family and neighbors are still potentially in danger. West of Los Angeles, the wildfire has already destroyed more than 400 buildings and burned an area bigger than Detroit. President Trump has approved an emergency disaster declaration making federal resources available to affected communities. The suspects accused of murdering eight family members in Ohio in 2016 are now in police custody. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine announced the four arrested were George Billy Wagner III, Angela Wagner, George Wagner IV, and Edward Jake Wagner. The Wagners had moved to Alaska after the murders. The four were accused of killing seven members of the Roden family and the fiance of one of the members. DeWine says all of the suspects have been charged with eight counts of aggravated murder. CNN is suing the Trump administration, demanding that correspondent Jim Acosta's press credentials to cover the White House be restored. The administration revoked them last week following President Trump's news conference, where Acosta refused to give up a microphone when the president said he didn't want to hear anything more from him. CNN claims the revocation of Acosta's press credentials violates the constitutional right to freedom of the press and due process. CNN is asking for an immediate restraining order to return Acosta to the White House. Amazon is splitting its planned second headquarters, dubbed HQ2, between New York's Long Island City in Northern Virginia's Crystal City. Amazon announced today it's investing $5 billion to create the additional headquarters, which will bring 25,000 new jobs to each location. Amazon received more than 200 proposals for the new headquarters. Amazon said economic incentives were another factor in choosing those cities. The company will get more than $2 billion in tax breaks. Let's head out to the weather patio. Clear and cool outside this evening. Dave Caulfield's watching the weather. Dave? Well, Susan and Eric, that wind has subsided a little bit, but it still feels plenty cold outside across southern Wisconsin. About 20 degrees below normal our high temperatures were today, and you can see what that does in some portions of Madison and James Madison Park. The water from Lake Mendota playing a little bit of freeze tag and winning, might I add. You can see the spray just freezing on contact and high temperatures. I use that term loosely, that high part of the high temperatures. Today we're in the mid to upper 20s at best across southern Wisconsin. Here's our time lapse on the Edgewater Skycam nearby to where that photo was taken. And we had a few clouds this morning, but really the sunshine dominated much of the afternoon. We're seeing a very pretty sunset on the Edgewater Skycam in downtown Madison this evening. But those temperatures really didn't respond too much to that sunshine. 20 to 25 degrees below where we should be for this time in November. Doppler track has been quiet across southern Wisconsin. I think it will remain that way over the next couple of days. Our next chance for possibly some snowflakes arriving late Friday into Saturday. Temperatures right now are even cooler than our highs, as you might expect as we lost that sunshine. 23 in Madison, 20 in the Dells already into the teens in Black River Falls and Camp Douglas. Wind speeds out of the north and west, not too bad at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. The wind direction will make all the difference as we go into tomorrow. That southerly wind will help slightly warmer air come back into town. But even with those winds not too bad, it still does feel like the low teens and the Dells and single digits in Camp Douglas. Here are our three forecast highlights tomorrow. More sunshine and a little bit warmer thanks to that southerly wind. By the middle of the week, we're staying sunny for the most part, maybe a few more clouds, but temperatures in the 40s on Thursday. That's still a little bit below normal, but hey, we'll take what we can get at this point. Then Friday and Saturday, the possibility of some light snow comes our way and we are cold again. But for Thanksgiving, as we look into the next 10 days or so, it looks like the atmosphere is throwing a little bit of split flow. You know, when you're at the Thanksgiving table with family, opinions can be a little bit split.
split. Well, the forecast will be a little bit split. The jet stream, I should say. When we get into this type of setup, usually milder air comes our way for the spots in between those two jet streams, but we could also get some quick systems to come through, and that looks to be the case right now. We'll definitely watch to see if those mild temperatures hang around. Mild being in the 40s where we kind of should be for this time of year. Not mild tonight, mostly clear and quite cold with temperatures in the mid-teens. For tomorrow, though, not as cold, mostly sunny and temperatures will be in the mid 30s. So future tracks staying pretty quiet and quite cold overnight. We're falling through the 20s into the teens to start Wednesday. Plenty of sunshine greets us on Wednesday and those southerly winds. They won't be that strong, but that shift really does make a difference. It will feel better outside tomorrow and Thursday. Those temperatures will reach the 40s, but overnight it could feel like the single digits across portions of southern Wisconsin. So that heater going to have to be kind of at full blast once again as we go into the overnight hours. Your seven day forecast during the next possibility of some snowfall is late Friday into Saturday. It's a little bit dicey right now and a little bit uncertain where that storm system will actually set up. So we're watching that closely. Sunshine greets us into the start of next week and those temperatures by the time we get to Turkey Day looking a little bit milder but also we could be looking at some raindrops for Thanksgiving and Black Friday. So stay tuned on that. Our traffic camera looking a little bit dark on our uh, Wisconsin Department of Transportation camera. However, I don't think we're looking too bad across portions of uh, the roadways across in and around Madison, but we are noticing those delays in both directions on the Beltline here. Your drive times 12 minutes. Verona Road to John Nolan eastbound. Average speed for around 25 miles per hour. And some other routes in and around Madison. Middleton to Sauk City westbound a little bit slow at 19 minutes with an average speed of around 50 miles per hour. And that is your first alert traffic update. All right, thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Ahead on New Street 5, what the TSA is doing to make sure passengers are safe during the busy Thanksgiving travel days. That's after a short break.
The Transportation Security Administration says it's ready to meet the demands of the expected record-breaking Thanksgiving travel season. AAA projects more than 54 million of us will travel next week, the most since 2005, and 4 million by air. Hillary Lane has more. Diego Palacio said his family are among millions of Americans planning to fly for the Thanksgiving holiday. I think it's an exciting time to disconnect and have fun with the family. AAA projects more than 54 million Americans will travel 50 miles or more this year. And TSA expects a record number of airline passengers. U.S. airlines are planning for 30 million point six people to travel. TSA officials anticipate the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and the Sunday after the holiday will be the busiest, but say they're ready to meet the demand. We have additional staff at all our checkpoints and throughout our airports. Uh, we have additional canine teams. We have new x-ray technology, new credential authentication technology. Step on over. TSA is urging everyone to pack smart and enroll in trusted traveler programs. At New York's LaGuardia Airport, some flyers say it's a time saver. Every time I travel, it makes it so much faster for me. For those planning to hit the road, travel times in the most congested cities could be as much as four times longer than normal, with drivers in San Francisco, New York City and Boston seeing the longest delays. It will also take more time to get to the airport. Give yourself a little extra time. Pack a little extra patience and serenity. TSA officials say they continue to deal with persistent security threats. They're asking travelers to report suspicious activities and Congress for more money to help keep passengers safe. Hillary Lane, CBS News, New York. AAA says travelers looking to save money can always fly out on Thanksgiving Day, but it's still relatively expensive. The average ticket price that day is $446. And stay with us. We'll have one final check of your forecast in just a moment.
It's cool outside tonight. Yeah, it is borderline cold in some areas. Even though that wind is coming down, at least we have a beautiful last light to look at in Madison on the WIC TV Skycam. 23 in Madison right now in the teens in some spots, especially to the north and west. We're starting off in the mid teens tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine, though, to help get those temperatures back closer to normal for this time of year. And then even warmer as we head into Thursday. Well, that's good. Yeah. We're back in 30 minutes for News 3 at 6. CBS Evening News coming your way next. Thank you.